Vulnerability is the ability to be influenced, the ability to be affected by someone. And we often only associate vulnerability with tears or frustration or concerns or worries. That's one aspect of vulnerability. The other aspect of vulnerability is, is to be, uh, to feel, um, happy, to feel appreciative, to be delighted, to feel love. It's like, oh my gosh, you said that. Oh, you were so, I was so glad you're here. Oh my goodness. That was such a good movie. Oh, we had such a great walk. Oh, the flowers were beautiful. You know, all, if this is the, the positive side of the feminine vulnerability, because vulnerability is, I need you. And so therefore, if I don't get what I need, then there's some sense of loss. But if I do get what I need, there's this great rejoicing. There's being affected by things. And that's what makes women so attractive to men uh, because it becomes unattractive if it's only the negative side of it. But the positive side is what we, we become most attracted to and what builds our confidence. Then when she shows her vulnerability on the negative side, we can stand there and feel like, oh, I'm here for you. But even with that, that's a new thing for men to learn how to listen even if he's being criticized or he feels like he's being given a message he's not good enough. So he, he can learn to do that. But first he has to learn to just listen to you being upset or bothered by things that don't have to do with him. And he begins to trust this process of femininity, which is talking about negative feelings, will lead you to feeling positive feelings. Most men instinctively do not understand that. And quite often, because women do instinctively or intuitively understand that, not all women, but many, they assume that when a man is upset, you want to get him to talk about his feelings and he'll come back to positive feelings. But actually, when men talk about their feelings, their frustrations, their disappointments and whatever, they go to their female side and makes a woman feel, in a sense, as the listener of that, more masculine. So you feel more like his mother over time. Or he begins mm-hmm. to feel like you're his mother. The sexual attraction goes away. The interest goes away. So it's really important that, you know, what's good for her is not necessarily good for him. What's good for her is to be able to share things. For him to be able to share, oh, you know, his his problems, his feelings about the problems and so forth. Don't go deeply into it as a woman. You know, you don't want to encourage that. I know every woman does because she feels if he does that, we'll be closer But actually, he'll feel weaker in your presence and lose interest. You feel closer to a man when you go into him is what you think. But actually, you feel more close to a man when he goes into you. Him going into you means he listens. He's there for you. He understands you. He cares about you. He does things for you. You know, I'm being a little extreme here, but that's... That's what women really, to come back to femininity, that's your relationship with the romantic partner in your life. You can have friends, men who are friends, it can all be like, you know, we're like brothers and sisters. But when you want the romantic relationship, you have to realize what romance is, is woman receives, man gives. It's not woman gives and man receives. It's woman responds to what man gives. And so you would create these situations where we're... The female side can be nurtured more, and his masculine side can be nurtured more because he feels successful. Yes, and as women, we can even create these opportunities for him to feel successful and for him to have that opportunity to know that what he's providing is very satisfying and appreciated. And like you said, that helps foster these romantic feelings. And I just love that you brought out this other side of vulnerability, that the vulnerability is not just being able to express our sorrow or our pain or our frustrations or those kinds of things that might be viewed as more negative emotions, but to show that natural feminine joy and our natural feminine emotions about things that please us or make us happy. And if a man's providing that, that's going to be a big win. We're going to feel good and he's going to feel good, right? Absolutely. That's the secret to this. And it's not its not only what he directly does for you or says to you, it's also, add to that, what he provides. If he brings, if you go for a walk in the garden, he, he, she says, let's go for a walk in the garden. He says, okay, and he drives you there or something, or he's with you. 
the fact that you're delighted by the garden or you're delighted by the play or you're delighted by the ocean or you went swimming with him, whatever it is that you're doing that you're delighted by, he'll take that personally like I provided it. Yes, I created this beautiful day for you. <laughs> you know, a woman says, oh, such beautiful sky and blue skies. A man goes, yes, I brought that to you. So <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's the woman's happiness is the key to it. And and then when he's away from you, this is a key. When he pulls away at times when you're not there, when he's not there, send him little text pictures of of you being happy. Just a little, you know, how you can send pictures now. Just, Mm -hmm. oh, we're thinking of you. I'm here doing da-da-da-da. He sees you happy. Whenever a man sees you happy and he's not actually there, he wants to be with you. He wants to be the one to provide that for you. And essentially, and you create distance so he can want to fill the distance, cross the distance. You want to encourage time apart so he can miss you. And then you can send little pictures to him. <laughs> he goes, why am I doing this? I want to be with her. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's so great. Yeah, I've noticed with my husband that if we do something or we go out together go out to dinner or whatever and I say something like, oh, honey, that just tasted so good tonight. That was such a great choice. I do notice that it's almost like he physically puts his shoulders back a little bit and looks so pleased with himself. It's really adorable. (laughs) It is. It is. I mean, I can see it in myself. I'm so easily, in a sense, manipulated. (laughs) You know, it's like, I'll do more of that. Okay. It's it's just that sense. And and it's it's femininity. It's this is what femininity is the the capacity to appreciate, to enjoy, to bubble up with happiness, and and that's what's required for women today to be if they're going to be on their masculine side. They have to go more to their female side. And for men, it's like we have to step up. If we want to sustain passion and love in a relationship, we have to be more than the men of the past. We can't just be these hard workers who provide money or whatever. We need to be capable of listening, helping, being flexible, responding to women, but not being a yes person, so to speak, but to find that balance of I take care of my needs and then I also give to her what she needs. So there has to be that balance because, you know, it's, women are often afraid of even saying what they want because they don't want a man just doing everything she wants. But when we're talking about what you like, that's the romance. You don't do it all the time. You have to do things yourself you like. But this is what I would like to do next week. This will be so much fun. Will you take me? That's the giving a man the information of what you like. Or you could say, God, there's so many wonderful things to do. I'd like to do this. I'd like to do this. Would you pick? Let him pick. But where you get into a trap is where a guy says, what would you like to do? And you go, I don't know. What would you like to do? That's Mm -hmm. the mistake. Don't go into what he would like to do. You can say, well, I don't know right away because maybe you don't know. You you can say, let's talk about it. You know, let me think of some of the things I might like. But even better is preparation is such a key thing for successful relationships. And women are the the masters of preparation. I mean, the I you know you you dra- you prepare. You think about your clothes. You balance your clothes. You put on makeup. You, women are preparing all the time. <laughs> when it comes to romantic relationship, often a woman might have the thought, well, he should do it all. He should quote do it all. But you're the preparer. So how do you prepare? Prepare for romance, you focus on what are some of the things that I would like to do. And instead of just saying, I want to do this, you say, here's two or three things I'd like to do. I'd like to do this, or I'd like to do this, or I'd like to do that. Would you pick? And then you let him pick, and then his sense of ownership to taking you becomes even greater. Because if my wife says, I want you to take me here, I mean, I'll do that. It'll be a fun thing. But if she says, I'd like to go do this, or I'd like to do this, I'd like to do that, you pick. Then you don't have to feel any responsibility for whether he likes it or not. It's solely based upon what you, you know, that he picked it. So you relax and your job, and you do have a job for romance, not just the guy. Her job is to focus on appreciating whatever happens. Okay, this is, you know, and you do that on the first date. No matter what happens, you'll tend to go, just that we're together, just that you called, it's all fine. (laughs) That's the most (laughs) feminine part of us, which can make good of everything. But it's hard to do that if you're having to plan the date and do all the details and everything, or if it's what he wants. So it's what you like to do, and he does his best to provide that for you. Mm. 
So, John, I just want to thank you once again for the privilege of this conversation, for your generosity. It's been such a gift and a blessing to have you with us. Thank you so much for letting me participate. It's been an honor for me, too. Thank you, and thank you to all of you. Thank you, John, and bye-bye for now.